channel itself has made a huge difference. If we didn't have the transport, we couldn't go. It's, it's more about building like a community within a community. Since she's been coming here, she's come out of her shell a lot more. We know that we've made a difference to some people. The kids have somewhere they can come and learn properly. We've helped a lot of kids. Also and Horse and Neston are two separate areas. They used to come under the same local authority. Ellesmere Port is mainly an urbanised area and Neston is semi-rural, but both have got their own issues. There was very, very little voluntary and community sector um, activity in, in either area. I, I think that there were lots of people who'd identified that there was a need for greater community um, involvement, that there was a need for setting up um, some organisations which would help support the community. I think it would have taken a lot longer than it did and I think it would have been a lot less joined up than it is. I think that there's um, lots of organisations that were funded through Fair Share who, who link very well with each other. Um, EPNAFCO has got a, a, a network, a uh, community and voluntary sector network, and we get lots of people who come to that. The priorities were set by um, lots and lots of consultation. There was consultation done with the panel members, there was consultation done with the local authority, with the PCT, with voluntary and community organisations. And there was no surprises really in, in, in what the priorities were, apart from it was decided that as Neston had, had historically had had such low levels of support that Neston would be a specific priority on its own. EPNAFCO is Ellesmere Port and Neston Association of Voluntary and Community Organisations um, and it's the infrastructure support organisation for Ellesmere Port and Neston. We didn't have a volunteer centre at all in Ellesmere Port and there was a real need for it because people were coming to us um, and saying they wanted a volunteer and we also had organisations asking us could we find them volunteers. Um, so we went to Fair Share and asked for some funding to set up a volunteer centre. To be honest, I, I, I think just the, just the fact that we're here has made a difference to, to local people's lives. Um, we went from eight years ago having no members and, and no idea really what was going on in the community and voluntary sector in Osmond Force in Neston to now having 250 member organisations and having a real handle on, on what there is out there and being able to support um, organisations to, to work together, to um, collaborate and, and, and making sure that people have the best services they possibly can. We've got, I think it's something like 2,000 people now who are, are registered as either volunteering or wanting to volunteer, looking for a placement. And it, it makes a huge difference to, to lots of people's lives um, for, for small organisations that are delivering services to children, to older people, um, to vulnerable adults, being able to access the amount of volunteers that they can now. You know, they, they can deliver um, services that they, that they just couldn't have done. In, in previous years. We have a few organisations that deliver really good services that are run completely by volunteers, community transport. All of the drivers of um, community transport buses are volunteers. So th th there's lots of organisations that are delivering essential services to people in Ellesmere Port who are run primarily by volunteers. The Ellesmere Port and Neston Live at Home scheme supports older people living on their own in their own homes and we offer various different activities uh, for which transport is needed. So we run a welcome centre here on a Monday and a Thursday 
Um, we also take people shopping on a Friday um, to either Sainsbury's or Morrison's and we alternate that. Take people out on trips, um, so for which all these different activities transport is needed. The success really is finding that people who uh, might not know anybody to start off with when they join Live at Home, and they come to a group such as this, um, they make new friends, um, it sort of gives them more confidence really to go, go on and do more things. Um, we have one group of ladies that now all go on holiday together, but they organise that themselves, and prior to coming to Live at Home they wouldn't have known each other. Um, it's, it's, it's more sort of uh, about building like a community within a community really um, and pre preventing um, social isolation. What benefits do you get from, from coming to the When we're all together, we chat together, don't we? We'd, we're sitting at home doing our knitting, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yes, Otherwise. Yeah. It's social, isn't it? Everybody's very friendly and very nice and we all try to help one another if yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing, if you were all in your own yes. home, you wouldn't be able oh, to no. do. No, no, no. No. From here on a Monday, we take people down to the Westminster Lunch Club, which is the WRBS Lunch Club. Um, so we do link in with other organisations. So some of our ladies go to a knit and natter group and we provide a volunteer to take them to that. When they started going down to Westminster for lunch as well, that became very good for people that see them cooking at home. And also, the trips out. I mean, a lot of people, now this year, for instance, I won't be going anywhere on holiday, un excepting on trips out. And uh, they're very reasonable and they are very well organized. And at Christmas, we have a great time. But there again, if we didn't have the transport to take us or bring us, we couldn't go. We are mainly a drop-in crash, so we work on a first-come, first-served basis. We take naught to school age, which most of the places don't take um, the little ones till they clean and dry, but we change nappies and look after them. We can give them bottles if they need them. We do keep our fees as low as possible. Probably, some people say sometimes they are a little bit low, but so a lot of our children come from a deprived area. We're right in the town centre. Um, got a lot of one-parent families, unemployment. Did the fair share funding make a big difference to the crash? Oh yeah, uh, we, we wouldn't have been able to stay open for this last three years if it hadn't been for that funding. You will be wobbling. Can you tell us about a time that the crash got together with other organisations to make a lasting difference to local people? Um, we were working together with training agencies and offering pre-booked places at a higher rate to help us with our funding as well. But this also enabled students to use us, assure that they had a place for their child and then they could go off and do their training with the uh, training agency that was involved. People have come to us that um, they've really needed help and we've been there for them. They do come with, with their troubles sometimes and we know that we've made a difference to some people and um, there's one or two that have suffered perhaps with depression or they've been lonely and they've come to the crash and they've found friends. So I think we've made a, a lasting difference in some lives. Well, I'm suffering with depression and it gives me a little bit, because my husband works full time and the other at school and uni, so it gives me a bit of me time so I can just have to do what I want to do without having to look after Caitlin all the time. So it has improved things? A lot, time. yeah. We've done quite a few things actually in the community. Um, we've opened our doors to absolutely anyone and at Christmas we've always done um, a Christmas lunch which we invite anybody to and it's mostly been um, the church people that have come but they, we do, we've done a lovely Christmas lunch. We've had seven children from one family through 
and I'm sure it has made such a difference because they've had a lot of upset in the family and um, I think without us they would probably have been stuck many a time with all the children that they got. What do you think that Trinity Crash has done that has been successful that can be shared with others? It's helped Caitlin come out of her shell a lot because she was like, she wouldn't play or nothing before, but now she seems to mix with other children a lot more and they, they work really hard with them here. Nobody else does this. And also I think now people are noticing us because we've got a lovely outside play area and the children are out there playing and the people going past notice and we've got more children coming in that way by them going past and seeing us playing outside. We were looking for funding um, and we spoke to EPN AVCO um, who suggested that um, Fair Share was an opportunity to tap into some of the lottery funding that needs spreading out throughout the country. When we first opened, um, we came in here with 50 members. Um, we put down on the Fair Share plan that we hope to have around about 100 to 120 in the first year. That shot to 180 in the first year. Um, we now have 280 members coming through the doors. That is purely gymnastics. Of the free runners, we average around about 20 to 30 per Friday night. The boys in particular, uh, you know, uh, one of the first quotes then we came in was, um, never thought we'd have anything like this in Ellesmere Port. So I say, you know, that to us was a big, you know, plus. We were actually helping out Ron uh, at Sutton High School, helping with the gymnastics. And then when we was, uh, got this place, uh, a few of our mates were helping out Ron. And then when it was done, we actually came here um, and we basically just sorted everything out and started chain. We had nothing at first. We had to learn outside, so we're in a very dangerous environment. But now the kids have somewhere they can come and learn properly in a safe environment. And they have people on a high level to teach them, which we never had. So I think it's a brilliant opportunity for the kids. We actually had the police come in um, to have a look at what was going on because um, they were um, a part of helping us um, get the message out. You know, if there is uh, free running going on and the court in a place that they shouldn't be, they could send them along to us. At first, um, they weren't very happy with it. They were like, what are you doing, lads? Are you actually breaking into this building? And at the time, we weren't very experienced ourselves. So we would just say, no, we're doing free running. And they'd be like, well, what's this free running? The police came in and they were supposed to be here for about five, ten minutes, ended up here for 25 minutes. They were gobsmacked at what the lads were doing, and I think it actually made a little bit of a connection between the police and some of the free runners, so that they weren't being nuisances. They seen that they were actually taking part in physical um, activity, um, so, you know, it sort of calmed it a little bit. Over the years, they've come to understand it a bit more, and we've come to understand them. So we've got a good relationship going on at the moment, but in the past it was a bit sketchy, to be fair, I suppose. <laughs> um, well, originally, um, Ron needed help with a few of the kids, because uh, some of them are quite a big group. So me and my mate Craig, we heard about it because Ron told us, and we started coming, and since then, we've helped a lot of kids. St Vincent de Paul Society in Ellesmere Port is a volunteer run project which was awarded a grant from the Fair Church Trust to pay for their van. Members of the public donate furniture and white electrical goods which are collected from the donors' houses and are taken to the depot where they are cleaned up and repaired. About half the items are sent to the two St Vincent de Paul shops to be sold at a reasonable cost, about £50 for a double bed or £30 for a wardrobe. The rest of the items are given to people who have very little to help them set up in a new home. This includes people moving out of the hostel for the homeless. I assist clients here move into more suitable accommodation. With this we uh, encourage them to look at sourcing their own furniture and white goods etc. St Vincent Paul assists us with that because they are a charity that helps that need. 
because there's sometimes there's difficulties with uh, Department of Work and Pension funding. The difference it makes is they have created a stability and an easy access for people in the Ills Report to access furniture that would be unaffordable if they had to go mainstream. Uh, there's numerous clients that we've supported that have been using St Vincent de Paul. One client was refused a community care grant that would mean he would live in, he would be asked to live in an unfurnished flat. With this, St Vincent de Paul assists him and he's now been able to continue his accommodation and settle into the community. What difference do you think has been made by the St Vincent de Paul project in the area? Uh, the difference is quite outstanding. If, if, they, if they weren't here, then we would have a backlog of homelessness cases. The move-on process would be more lengthy and we wouldn't be able to support any other people because of the backlog. I think the Fair Share Programme has been um, excellent for Owls Newport. I mean, the, the panel that's come together meets and, and decides what projects should be funded. That's only part of it because um, if, the, if a project comes to Fair Share and it's not funded, then um, they're directed somewhere else. So anybody that comes really will end up getting some sort of help and support. It means that there, there are lots of people who are aware of what's going on in Ellesmere Port, so it's easier to, to, to link organisations together to, to make sure that resources are being shared. You know, it's, it, it's made a huge difference. The panel itself has made a huge difference, um, as well as the money. The money's been fantastic for Ellesmere Port, but actually having to sit down and work out what we need, who's the best person to do it, who they can link in with to make sure it gets delivered in, in the best possible way. That's been a real opportunity to be able to take things forward for Elsmere Port.